Good morning and welcome to Worship of St. Giles. We're so glad that you are joining us today. If you're here in the sanctuary, um, we are glad to see your faces and would invite you to take the friendship register at the end of the pews to sign it and pass it down so that the people you're sitting next to can know that you're here. If you're joining us online, we're also really glad that you're here, whether that's today on Sunday or Tuesday or Wednesday. If you would, um, leave a note in the chat or send us a note through the office just so we can um, connect with you and um, support you wherever you are. A couple of announcements today. May the 22nd, the choir is going to have a concert at 3 o'clock this afternoon at John Knox Presbyterian Church. So we hope that you all will join us there at 3 to hear the good work that they've been doing. Next Sunday is Memorial Day weekend. We know it's sort of a different time for a lot of families, so there will not be children's Sunday school on Sunday morning. No children's Sunday school next Sunday, but next Monday, Memorial Day, if you've been out of town and are coming back at 5 o'clock on Memorial Day, we're going to have a brown bag picnic out in the courtyard. So come. And um, bring a little supper for yourself or your family, and we'll have some games. You're also welcome to bring whatever outdoor games you have at home and enjoy, be it cornhole or whatever. Come and play with us at 5 o'clock on Memorial Day. There are some other announcements in your bulletin that I would encourage you to be attentive to, to read the e-news. But for now, let us take a deep breath in and breathe out. To breathe in. And breathe out, take a deep breath in, give thanks for the Spirit of God, and breathe out, breathing the Spirit in the world. So we breathe in, in the Spirit of Christ, and breathe out, the Spirit of Christ in the world. To breathe in, the Spirit of God Almighty, and breathe out, the Spirit of God Almighty in the world. As we breathe in... And we breathe out. We give thanks for God who binds us together in life and breath so that we might worship God today.
sisters and brothers, I invite you to rise as we join together in our call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Alleluia. pray together. Alleluia! We sing of your triumph over the grave. We praise you for baptismal waters that carry us to life eternal. And yet we confess that we do not live as though you are the way. We close our hearts off from you, acting as though we don't need you, forgetting that life and love start with you. We close our hearts off from one another, ignoring your call to love neighbor and stranger alike. Forgive us, O Lord. Correct us with your grace. Open our hearts to receive you anew this day. It is the Lord who opens eyes to see. It is the Lord who softens hearts to hear. It is the Lord who returns us to God's presence again and again. Peace. 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 You are loved. You are enough. You belong. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and reclaimed. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
So then, as people who are forgiven and freed, let us share the, price, the peace of Christ which Christ had given us. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, you are so big and strong and mighty. As we come to your word, let us lift up our thanksgiving, our praise, and our wonder at all of the mysteries that your word holds, all of the depths, all of the bigness. Help us to see, to hear, to listen, to understand, and to live your word as our life. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is from Psalm 67. Listen as the Spirit speaks through this word. Let God grant us grace, and let God bless us. Let God make his face to to shine on us. (sighs) So that your way becomes known on earth, so that your salvation becomes known among all the nations. Let the people... Thank you, God. Let all the people thank you. Let the people celebrate with joy and shout with joy because you judge the nations fairly and guide all nations on earth. (sighs) Let the people thank you, God. Let the people thank you. The earth has yielded its harvest. God blesses us. Our God blesses us. Let God continue to bless us. Let the far ends of the earth honor God. This ends our first reading. At this time, I'd like to invite the children to come forward and join me for our time for children. As you come forward, please remember that we are collecting a Thanksgiving offering for uh, Matthew 28, a ministry uh, in Haiti. So if you'd like to contribute to that offering, you can add to our giving jar. Thank you so much. And then you're welcome to just take a seat in this front pew. Thank you. Good morning. Well, that was very soft. It's a tired morning. All right, that's fine. Who here likes to play? One kid. Great. No one else? Oh, two. Okay. Three. Great. I love to play. Did you know that play is also something God wants us to do? It is something that is a spiritual practice. And what makes it a spiritual practice is it is something that we can give our whole hearts to and come out learning about the world and the wonder that's around us and seeing God in new ways. I think Jesus loved to play. And Jesus was always telling people, let children come to me. Let them bring their creativity. Let them bring their special way of seeing the world. Let them bring an attitude that welcomes and embraces. And unless you see the world just like that, you'll never see the kingdom of God. Because Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom of God being present right where we were. And so he used that phrase, kingdom of God, all the time. And so it's really important to pray, or to play 
and it's important to pray, but it's really important to play. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put some water in this cup. Okay, that's a little much. Okay. We're going to put some water in this cup. That's a perfect amount. We're just going to set those aside. Not worry about that. And then I need somebody who trusts me. All right, Connor, great. Come up here. <laughs> what are these? Eggs. Yes, beautiful colored eggs. You said you trust me, right? So much. I'm just going to take one of these eggs and I'm going to crack it right over your head, okay? okay. Great. <laughs> what do you think's going to happen? You don't think anything's going to happen if I crack this egg right over your head? Why don't you step down so we don't get a mess on the stairs? Stand right here. Okay, right? Now, these look like Easter eggs, but they're not Easter eggs, because that would be like really dodgy, because Easter was a long time ago, and they, they would smell really bad. Okay, ready? Count to three. One, two, three. What? Look, they're like full of confetti. <laughs> Here, here, come here. It hurt? I'm sorry. It shouldn't have hurt. It should just be like an egg. You can take that and then you can play with it as you want. At the very beginning, I put water in these two cups, right? Who wants the blessing of living waters? Everybody, right? Who doesn't want that? So we'll pray, and at the end of that, I will throw the water out over everybody. Because part of play is you show up and anything can happen, right? No, just a second. All right. So, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the gift of play. I don't always know what will happen, but I'm glad for the journey the wonders, the surprises, and the challenges that help me grow. All right. Amen. Sorry. Going to dump this one out. We don't need this. We're just going to do one cup. You ready? Ta-da! <laughs> All right, you are welcome to go back to your families and enjoy the rest of worship as we continue to say yes to God and experience the wonders that are all around. I want to applaud some of the individuals sitting in this front row who had a s enough self-awareness to say, no, I don't want to play. No, <laughs> no, 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 I don't want to play. <laughs> There's definitely some of that. <laughs> Uh, the second reading today is from Acts chapter 16. We're going to start in the sixth verse, reading through the 15th. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the regions of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit kept them speaking the word in the province of Asia. When they approached the province of Mycenae, they tried to enter the province of Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus wouldn't let them. Passing by Mycenae, they went down to Troas instead. A vision of a man from Macedonia came to Paul during the night he stood urging Paul, come over to Macedonia and help us. Immediately after Paul saw the vision, we prepared to leave for the province of Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We sailed from Troas, straight from Samothrace, and came to Neapolis the following day. From there we went to Philippi, 
a city of Macedonia's first district and a Roman colony. We stayed in that city several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside to the city gate to the river bank, where we thought there might be a place for prayer. We sat down and began to talk with the women who had gathered. One of those women was Lydia, a Gentile God worshiper from the city of Thyatira, a dealer in purple cloth. As Lydia listened, the Lord opened her heart to embrace Paul's message. Once she and her household were baptized, she urged, Now that you have decided that I am a believer in the Lord, come and stay in my house. And she persuaded us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now this is a story of a road trip with God that winds through Syria, Galatia, and Macedonia, landing in Philippi the very people who received a later letter from Paul, the Philippians letter. The Spirit of God was very specific as she led Paul and Silas and Timothy to this specific place. There were right turns and left turns. There were boats and roads, detours and dreams. Finally, it seemed that the men were in the place they needed to be. They went down to the river to pray on the Sabbath. And sat down and visited with women who were waiting for worship to begin. One woman named Lydia was part of the crowd, even though she wasn't Jewish. She must have been a regular because people knew her as a worshiper of God. Lydia listened to what Paul said. Then the Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what Paul said. God took her to the next level, which led Lydia and her household to be baptized, which led her house to be the base of operations for the early church's expansion into Europe. Through the Spirit's guidance to Philippi, through God's transformation of Lydia, Christ's story spreads onto a whole new continent. It started with the Spirit. It started with the Spirit and continued with an open heart. The human heart has always been connected to faith through feelings and rumors and the occasional scientific data. Through Scripture, we hear how God opens and closes, softens and hardens people's hearts. God uses our heart as a gateway into our beings and doings, transforming what we think and how we act. And we use our heart in our faith, so much so that our language has grown around our intuitive understanding, which point to the truth of who we are and how we operate in our beings. Our heart's posture is a critical component of how we relate to God. Lydia knew God. She had heard God's story, and she was hooked because she kept coming back for worship with her regular congregation. But something changed that day. The day Lydia met Paul and Silas and Timothy, it wasn't the apostles' friendliness that swayed her. It wasn't Paul's passionate preaching. It wasn't even the beautiful Riverbank Sanctuary. It was the Spirit of God who opened her heart and transformed her. The Spirit of God called Lydia to be on the riverbank that day to hear more. Lydia heard the call, responded to the call, and said yes. And her life, her household's life, the lives of Philippi and Europe and Christians in every time and place were forever changed. According to Tina Fey, don't hear that very often in sermons. According to Tina Fey, one of the rules of improv comedy is to say yes and. This rule requires that comedians accept the invitation into a story and then trust the direction the story goes and add a little more. 
So if I say, look at this awesome hat I'm wearing, and you respond simply, yeah, the story sticks in the mud. It doesn't really go anywhere. If I say, look at this awesome hat I'm wearing, and you say, you're not wearing a hat, then there's no story to tell. It doesn't work, and it's no fun or funny when your teammate doesn't jump into the scene with you. But on the other hand, if I say, look at this awesome hat I'm wearing, and you say, ooh, tell me more about those color choices, and is that a live bird up there? Then everybody starts to imagine this crazy hat that's on my head, and we launch into a story together. Saying yes and commits to our shared story and continues the journey together. This rule of yes and applies to play. If a friend asks you to play and you say no, then there's no play date. If Adam asks me to play a board game and I say yes, but then spend the time stewing about all the chores that aren't getting done while we're playing, I won't say that's happened a couple of times. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we have a play date, but neither one of us has much fun when that happens. To have a great game night, we both need to say yes and give our full selves, heart and mind and body, to the play. Yes and is also a good rule for faith. God opens our hearts, then we gratefully respond, yes, and. Saying yes to God without any follow-through is the equivalent of, meh. <laughs> True discipleship answers yes, and. Yes, Lord, we want to follow you, so we won't just sit here. We'll join classes and Bible studies where we'll ask hard questions and hear uncomfortable answers. Yes, Lord, we want to follow you, and we will care for neighbors and strangers alike, inviting people who are different from us into conversation and maybe even friendship. Yes, Lord, we want to follow you, and we will share our financial resources with you so that all may be fed and housed and clothed and nurtured. Yes, Lord, we want to follow you, so we will make time to spend five minutes with you each day reading more of your story, and listening for your spirit's directions. People have long understood this relationship between an open heart and God's call to us. The ancient poet and mystic Hafez wrote of God's invitation to discipleship in this poem. Every child has known God, not the God of names, not the God of don'ts, not the God who ever does anything weird, but the God who only knows four words. And God keeps repeating them, saying, Come dance with me. Come dance. Lydia heard God's invitation to dance while she sat on the riverbank. She heard the invitation, her heart was opened, then she said yes, and she got up and danced. She danced into the waters of baptism, she danced her household into God's story, she opened her home to share the story with countless other neighbors and strangers who joined in the play themselves. Certainly, there are days when we hear God's invitation to dance, but we respond no. More often than not, we probably respond Meh, to God's invitation, to the hungry person who catches your eye, to the lonely person whose heart calls out to yours, to the organization or committee that really needs your ideas and support, 
to the Sunday school class that has a chair with your name on it. We don't have enough time, we don't have enough energy, and we have a lot of reasonable excuses. But some clear, glorious days and some dreadfully bleak days, we hear God say, come dance with me. And we respond, yes, and. Throughout my growing up, my parents hosted many guests in our home. Some stayed for only a meal, some stayed for weeks. <laughs> Musicians, refugees, and many, many international students spent time sharing their stories with our family. Their stories nurtured a curiosity within me so that when I was in college and learned about the Presbyterian Young Adult Volunteer Program, which is a year of service somewhere around the world, I thought that program was my chance to hear and see God's story from another perspective. A missional year sounded perfect to me. An opportunity to live overseas to gain work experience, to support the larger church. I said yes to an invitation to join the Northern Ireland team. I said yes to living in Belfast. I said yes to serving a nonprofit organization and a local Presbyterian congregation. And I gave my whole self over to the experience, to the point that even now, I feel as though I am still paying forward the price of that and. I feel the ripples of those initial yes as they impact my worldview. They deepen my curiosity of neighbors and they wait my prayers for peace with images of particular places and individuals. As people say, like Lydia, my pump had been primed by a lifetime of nurturing community with years of Sunday school and mission trips and people committed to sharing God's story with me. The Spirit readied my heart with each international guest I met and each story I heard so that when I went out to the shores of Northern Ireland and sat down to pray, the Spirit of God ripped open my heart, forever shifting the trajectory of my life. We at St. Giles have heard God's story again and again. We have seen God's Spirit at work in the world. We have felt God's Spirit moving in our own hearts. We've even done a jig or two in our 49-year history. Our pump has been primed. In this particular season, on this particular day, what is the specific invitation you sense God extending to you, to us, to our community? How is God calling us to dance? That, friends, is the big post-Easter resurrection question of discipleship. We've said yes, now what is our and? May the Spirit give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts that are open to whichever way the holy wind blows. Amen.
Living with hearts open, we walk into the world. Let us proclaim what we believe as a church and as a family, using the words of the Nicene Creed. Christians, what do you believe? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated. Let us give thanks and prayer. O oh God, thank you for all the gifts that you give. The gifts of wonder and surprise, the gifts that are expected, and the gifts that are unknown. Our lives are all a journey, like we are soil tilled, full of seeds that have been planted, and get to bear witness to the flowers, the weeds, and everything else that grows out of that. We are grateful for you, O oh God, our teacher and our leader. We also give thanks for all of the teachers who have helped us to see in new ways, help us to understand with a new mind, help us to live with a more open heart, and help us to be your light to this world. In light of all that is, we lift up Bunny and Susan, Jennifer and Susie, Donna and Liza, Nancy and Kate, Tara and Ted, Kathy and Patrick, Tim and Mike, Kalia and Brenda, Debbie and Curtis, Carol and Katie, Jill and Mike, Jeannie and Sherry Ann, Will and Meg, Reg, and Adam. For all of the teachers who we have named, we give thanks. And for all of the teachers who have left a memory on our heart, changed the way we walk and experience the world, opened our hands and our eyes to be compassion to those around us, we give thanks. We know that no name goes unknown to you. And so help us to say yes and embrace all of the experiences that come from saying yes. Help us to say yes to the work of peace in the world and to embrace the challenges that come by saying yes to the work of peace so that we might be the ones who dismantle systems that encourage fighting and strife. That as we say yes to peace, we also say yes and to the work of forgiveness and reconciliation, knowing that those roads are difficult and hard to travel. Help us to say yes 
and to the work of justice. So that justice does not look like retribution, but looks like restoration. That it looks like grace outpoured. That judgment and love are never separate. And that we pour your love upon the world as you pour your love upon us. Knowing that as you forgive our sins, we are called to forgive the sins of others and recognize that our own sins are forgiven. So that we might also say yes and to the work of freedom in this world. Help us to say yes to the difficult and distressing news of diagnoses we'd rather not hear. And to embrace the journey that comes after our doctors and healers give us such news. Knowing that sometimes the yes we say and the end we live are a path towards our own mortality. That not all journeys have an end in recovery, but some have an end in your gracious arms. So help us to say yes and to the fullness of both healing and recovery, of life and death, of all that is, all that was, and all that will be. And as we say yes, help us to lift our voices in words of gratitude and alleluia, giving thanks and praise for all that is, even when it just is what it is. United as one people, coming from places and traditions and cultures that are very different, help us to say yes and embrace the fullness of what it is to both be many and one as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, you are invited to say yes to sharing the gifts that God has given. The gifts that you have in teaching, the gifts that you have in giving the gifts that you have in abundance. Say yes and share so that the world might see and know the glory of God. As the offering plates are passed, hold them and say yes. And look at your reflection and see the wonder that God has created. For you each reflect God's face and image and bear that face and image to the world around you. So let us say yes, and as we give of our time, of our talents, and our treasures this day.
Holy One, Holy Three, we lift our lives up to you as an offering. Take all that we have, all that we are, all that we do, and use it for your glory here and around the world so all the people would know your good news and we would join in the dance you have called us. Amen. Sisters and brothers, what does the Lord require of us? Justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. For God is good. All the time. And all the time. Your homework this week is be attentive to the ways that the Spirit is at work in your lives. We don't open our own hearts up to God. God does the heavy lifting. We just need to pay attention to where that's happening. It's usually not in really big ways that you're going to say, oh my gosh, you know, my head hurts. I just got bonked on the head. No, it's not usually like that. It's usually subtle. If you can't see the Spirit of God working, if you can't hear the Spirit of God working, if you can't feel the Spirit of God working, it probably means you're moving too fast and making too much noise. Slow down. Be still. Sit down on that riverbank and pray with one another and watch how God invites us to dance. As you go out this day, may the love of God surround you, the peace of Christ support you, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit overshadow you this day, now and forever. Amen.